How's it going everyone? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. The holidays are fast approaching and I think we can all admit that buying gifts for DIYers, people that make things for themselves, chasers of the craft can be a right pain in the proverbial. So today I am making a list of 12 items that any craft distiller, home brewer, craft beer connoisseur or spirit connoisseur would love to get their hands on. Welcome Distiller everyone, I'm Jesse and this is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. Like I said in the intro, it can be a right pain to find gifts for chasers or enjoyers of the craft. So this video is for partners, spouses, lovers, friends, family, anyone that has a chaser of the craft in their sphere of existence that they'd like to get a gift for. And if you happen to be a chaser of the craft, uh, maybe this is one of those videos that you can uh, accidentally on purpose leave laying around for someone else to find. <laughs> All right, let's get stuck right in, guys. These items are in no particular order. I will leave links for everything down below. Let's kick things off on the enjoyment side of the craft rather than the creation side of the craft. And uh, I think we have to talk about hip flasks. Now that's great for the spirit guys, but what about the beer guys? How do they sneak their booze in somewhere? Yeah, it doesn't fit in your pocket so well. <laughs> Here's the deal team, these two items, the hip flask and the growler, are both pretty, I guess, romanticized to be honest, especially the hip flask. But here's the deal guys, anyone that loves craft spirits or craft beer loves the idea of being able to take some with them to share or just to make their night a little bit cheaper. <laughs> these are two items that are obviously kind of cool if you can personalize them. So I will stick some links down in the description for a couple that I like but you may want to look around and find something special for the person that you're looking for. Something that means something to them. Or go classy and uh, unlabeled. So if you've got a beverage and you've taken it somewhere, if you're not going to knock it straight out of the flask, or if you're sitting in the comfort of your own home, you want to be able to drink that out of a vessel. Now this is the second thing that I would suggest buying for any lover of craft beverages. And the reason being is that uh, we always love, we always love to have more glasses. You should see our bar right now. It's, um, it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Let's get beer out of the way first. And the reason I say that is once again, I'm not going to be overly specific guys uh, because Different beer lovers love different types of beer and those different types of beer will all have different types of glasses that, you know, they're best served in. For someone like me, I don't have a real specific love for a certain type of beer and that's why I've got all sorts of different glasses. I've got another, I don't know, 10, 15 types inside as well. Perhaps a variety set of different craft beer glasses or if you know that that person you're getting something for loves a specific type of drink, have a look around and I guarantee you there'll be a specific type of glass for that beer. Now, there's no real difference when it comes to spirits. There's different glasses for all different types of things, but my love is scotch. And yes, I actually do buy into the hype. I think that these little guys here, the Glen Cairns or the Glen Cairns, however you want to say it, are well worth the money and yes, they do actually make the experience better. In New Zealand, these aren't cheap, they're about $10 to $15 a pop depending on where you get them, but you can get some great deals in America on Amazon right now, four packs and that kind of thing. Now this is the original, the original but uh, a lot of other people do make very similar glasses and brand them as well. So once again, if uh, that person you're buying something for is into something specific, maybe you get them something specific as well. On the topic of glasses, all glasses, beer glasses, spirit glasses, wine glasses, um, you know, brandy snifter glasses, any of those sorts of things, I've yet to find a craft spirit drinker that doesn't enjoy sharing a drink with someone else as well. So if you are going to get them a special glass, I would suggest thinking about getting at least two and maybe four. Also speaking of friends, one of my really, really good buddies, 
lifelong friend uh, hooked me up with this bottle when he came back from a bit of a trip and uh, I gotta say this stuff's knocked my socks off I've never had grappa before and this stuff is um, it's different it's weird and I'm fast falling in love with it I need to figure out how to get my hands on this stuff in New Zealand mmm all right anyway Next up, I want to talk about the STC-1000. Has everything to do with controlling temperature. Now there are a whole lot of options in this range and uh, especially if you're not someone that is involved in the craft uh, and is doing this personally, it can be a bit of a minefield. So I'm not going to suggest uh, PIDs or any of that crazy stuff. What I will suggest is an STC-1000. These things are getting cheap now, there's a bunch of different versions of them and the reason that they're so cool is they do a simple job and they do it damn well. Essentially all they do is monitor temperature of whatever you want it to monitor. Uh, if that temperature gets too high it'll turn a circuit on which you can plug into a fridge or an air conditioning unit or something like that. If the temperature gets too low it will turn on another circuit which you may have a heater or a light bulb or an electric blanket or a heat pad plugged into. For brewers, for distillers, this is awesome. For me, primarily for fermentation, but there are other applications as well. This is kind of one of those things too, most brewers and most distillers would probably happily get a duplicate SDC 1000. They'd happily get two or three of them even. Uh, I'm thinking about buying my second now. So it's one of those things that's hard to go wrong with. Let's move from controlling a variable temperature to measuring variables. Specifically, specific gravity and alcohol itself. Now, what I've got here is a hydrometer and also uh, some alcometers. The alcometers are for the distillers and the hydrometer is for distillers and brewers. Hydrometers measure specific gravity, but most brewers ones will have alcohol potential on them as well. Uh, and essentially what this does is allows you to measure how much sugar is in something before you ferment it, and then how much sugar is in it after you've fermented it, uh, giving you all sorts of ridiculously helpful information along the way. The, things with the, the thing with these guys, and the thing that I put them on the list 100% is because they are made of glass, and we break the things, we break them a lot. So having an extra one of these around is always a good thing to have. So this is great for brewers and distillers, uh, and I would go so far as to say that if you're taking either of those crafts seriously, it's an absolute must, you have to have one of these. Moving over to the distillers, we've got a very, very similar instrument. These are alchometers and they measure the ABV or the proof of a liquid assuming that it's just alcohol uh, and water for the most part. The reason that I've got three of them is that I chose a set uh, that is split the 0% to 100% alcohol onto three different instruments giving you a greater resolution on each one of them. I'd probably recommend doing the same for someone who's, uh, who's into or quite serious about distilling. The next item on the list is very, very similar to a hydrometer in that it performs a very similar task. This is a refractometer and instead of measuring the specific gravity of a liquid, it measures how much, uh, that it how much it refracts light. This tool can be very helpful for both distillers and brewers, but I would suggest that it's probably more specific to someone who really enjoys the fermentation side of it. If, so if you are just dealing with a distiller who really doesn't get his geek boner through yeast and fermentation, maybe this isn't such a great tool. And the reason I say that is as soon as fermentation starts, uh, its use drops off significantly, really significantly. But if you do take those things seriously, I would suggest that this is a better tool than a hydrometer. Uh, and personally, I'd much rather use this. Next up we have pH meters. Uh, these things are getting insanely cheap now. It used to be, it used to cost an exorbitant amount of money to get a half decent pH reading. I chose to get this Sun Mellow uh, little kit and I actually got this off Amazon. I chose to do so because I thought it was a pretty reasonable price. It had good reviews 
and it came with a nice little case which a lot of them didn't as well which uh, does help protect the thing why is this why is ph important well ph is important mostly on the fermentation side but this is one of those things that uh, works really well for the fermentation geeks so home brewers for beer but also distillers because they tend to ferment some weird and wacky stuff uh, especially if they're messing around with sour mashing and backset dunder pits all that sort of jazz uh, once again this is one of those things that really is it's a it's a borderline must item you can get away without it but it's going to make your job a whole lot easier with it but if you do buy a ph meter for someone i would uh, totally totally recommend getting some of these little sachets to go along with it basically these buffer sachets allow you to accurately recalibrate your ph meter because they will go out of whack really quickly and because you should be using these things really really frequently when you uh, use a ph meter you will go through them super super quick so get a little stock of these guys as well because they're, they're pretty cheap too next we have the grain mill now this used to be kind of a luxury item for home brewers but uh, more and more they're becoming accessible and more and more they're allowing people to do some pretty cool stuff now now there are cheaper ways uh, to mill grain i guess there definitely aren't easier ways to do it you could use a blender uh, you probably don't want that happening in your kitchen and doing any serious amount of grain is an absolute pain in the butt you can use corona mills and things like that once again they're not really suited for the purpose although they do do a decent job and because of the, the price of these things have come down a whole lot i would seriously consider getting a uh, a brewing specific grain mill now this one is the keg king malt muncher and i would say that it is the entry level it's okay grain mill i've got the two roller version they've also got a three roller version depending on how much the person is going to use the thing you may want to think about upgrading a little bit now this is they are great for brewers and distillers and they allowed you to do two things one they allow you to buy things in bulk grains tend to last longer before they're ground so if you can buy them in bulk store them and grind them as you need them you're in for a whole lot less expense uh, on the ingredient side of your recipes. Two, they let you play with things that you may not be able to get at your local home brewing store, something that all chasers of the craft are pretty interested in. Next up, we have thermometers, guys. Brewers and distillers are nutty about these things. Brewers, because they want to know super specific temperatures for their mash and their ferment, and distillers, because well, they want to know the temperature of the vapor or the liquid uh, coming off depending on how they do things some of the other instruments in brewing and distilling like this thing and the ph meter that we talked about earlier both rely on knowing a relatively accurate temperature as well so these things come in useful for all parts of the hobbies next let's talk about hygiene shall we i'm not talking about the brewer or the distiller themselves i'm talking about the hygiene of their fermentation if the brewer themselves stink, yeah, you're on your own on that one. But what I can help you with is sorting them out with some star sand. This stuff is hands down the gold standard of sanitation when it comes to home hobbies of this nature. And the reason is that it'll kill damn near everything super, super quickly. But it is not dangerous to ingest the stuff itself, which means that you can sanitize a bucket and then you don't have to rinse it out with water that isn't sanitary which ruins the whole point right now i will say guys for anyone that is making beer something like this is an absolute must if they don't have it get it for them on the distilling side of things distillers can get away with being a lot less careful when it comes to sanitation because the product isn't sitting around uh, for ages and ages it's you know literally getting the bejesus boiled out of it for hours on end so it's not so much of a problem next up we have chillers what i have here is an immersion chiller you put cold water in one end of it it comes out the other end of it and this basically turns into a giant heat sink for want of a better word so you can cool wort or wash or whatever 
you want down super quickly. Now that is really important for beer brewing, less important for distilling, but nevertheless very handy. Potentially the easiest to use, but also maybe the least effective is the immersion chiller like this. You literally pop it in, you run the cold water through it, easy as that. There are also counterflow chillers and plate chillers, which have a step up in cost for both, a step up in the level of uh, expertise needed to run them, but they also have a big step up in the results they give. Next up, I want to show you my auto siphon. Now this is a little bitty one, and to be honest, I need a much larger one. So I'm on the hunt for a bigger one of these. Wifey, hint, hint. But when you get into these hobbies, you quickly figure out that a whole lot of your time is spent transferring liquid from one place to the other. And often the easiest and cheapest way to do that is with a siphon. Those bad boys let you do it without having to suck on the end of the hose. In both beer making and distilling, a lot of the things that you end up measuring out, you measure tiny little amounts of things. And that's where a set of jewelers or precision scales can come in super, super handy. Yes, you may look a little like a drug dealer, uh, especially if you are measuring out hops. But trust me, these things come in super handy. All right, time for a quick drinks break. I need to do two things. First of all, first of all, I need to remind you that if you haven't made some of the aged eggnog, there's still time to get it in now, give it a week or two, and enjoy the stuff. I made a video on making this stuff a while ago with a whole lot of slow-mo footage in it. If you haven't checked that out yet, go and do so, and I'd love to hear how you guys find your mixtures when you make them up. Second of all, I really, really, really need to thank the Patreons. So thanks a bunch to all the people over here for helping the channel out. Without these people, there is no such thing as still it. So thank you so much, guys. So anyway, team, there's my list of gifts for craft brewers, craft drinkers, and craft distillers. If you are one of the people that are into those things, I would love for you to jump into the comments down below and let me know what you think a great gift would be. And if you are still struggling to think of a gift for someone special, Put it as a question down in the comments below and I guarantee you there'll be a bunch of people from the channel that'll help you out if I don't get there first. Alright team, I hope you enjoyed hanging out as much as I enjoyed making this video. So if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you really like the video and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you do so down below. So if you want to help the channel out or help yourself out and get a nice gift, make sure you share this video with those that you think would enjoy watching it as well. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I'm going to go finish my grappa. But like always, keep on chasing the craft, and I'll see you next time. See ya.